Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is another Field Survey Friday video. Doing these videos for my survey techs and mappers so they can learn a little bit about how we do stuff in the field, pass their CST or LSIT exams. In this video, we're going to teach you about the differences between a cross-section topographic survey and a breakline topographic survey. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now at the beginning of the video, I'm not a huge fan of cross-section surveys. I did a lot of them when I was a young surveyor. Uh, they are basically an old school way of doing topographic surveys. Um, a, a lot of engineers still use them because engineers just, a lot of engineers do, still do stuff the old way. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that there isn't ever a time or a place uh, for cross sections, uh, but it's, it's not a great way to do topographic surveys and, and I'll explain why. But, I'm going to teach you the difference. You may be in a situation where you're being asked by an engineer to do a cross-section survey, so you should understand what it is. You should understand how that method works. Um, you should also understand what a break line survey is, what makes it different from a cross-section survey, and then you should understand you know, how you can mix the two, you can actually mix them up. So we're going to talk about that. I've got a, an example over here we're going to look at. Okay, but let me just go through a few, a few points on the differences between, we'll talk about a few of the differences between cross-section survey and a break line survey, then we'll talk about what each of those surveys actually is. Okay, so cross-section survey is, is a, is what, it's what we call sampling method. Okay, so you're, you're not surveying all the important features on the site, you're just taking a sample of those features. Okay, and in fact, in some software, the cross-section line is actually called a sample line for that reason. Okay, so just remember, um, it, it's, it's a sample of what's actually on the ground. It's not a comprehensive survey, okay? So you're gonna have gaps in your data. So as a, a consequence of this first point, you know, cross-section surveys work good on sites with little variation. So for example, if you're doing a topographic survey of a road and the road's fairly typical through the survey area, um, you know, it doesn't change width or, or uh, change structure, but it, it's pretty typical. Um, then a cross-section survey, you know, works pretty good in that circumstance. Uh, Cross-section surveys, just because of the way the way they the way they work, they're used most often on route surveys or corridor surveys. So if you have a long linear feature like a road, a highway, a levee, a pipeline, sometimes you'll you'll see people do cross-section surveys on those. They just cross-section surveys lend themselves more to to linear types of surveys. Uh, so break line surveys are more effort in the field. I was gonna say they cost more money, but that might not be accurate. They might actually cost less money by the time you're all done, but they do require more effort in the field. Uh, break line surveys also require that your field crews know something about surface modeling in CAD or other 3D modeling software, or at least have been trained to understand some of that because you can't do a good break line survey if you don't understand surface modeling. Break line surveys are more accurate. They are not a sampling method. You're actually trying to capture all of the key features, horizontal and vertical features on the site. Okay, so let's talk about how these two two different types of topo surveys actually work. Okay, so I've got a little diagram sketched out here. So this is a levee. Okay, so this is the crown of the levee. Okay, this is the dry side of the levee and the water side of the levee. There's, there's a ditch here, what they call a toe ditch. This is the water. Okay, so we have a lot of this in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta where I grew up surveying. Okay, now I, I should, let me sh show you guys just kind of a typical, so that's a plan view. We're looking down like we were in a helicopter. Okay, here's what it looks like profile view from the side. So your, your levee looks something like this. If this was a delta levee out in the delta. Okay, so here's a side view. Here's the water side, okay, your tow ditch would be in here. Okay, this would be your tow ditch. This is your water side over here, okay, and this is your levee. This is the crown, what they call the crown. Okay, your ramp would come out like this. This would be your ramp. Okay, water side, levee, crown of the levee, ramp, okay, tow ditch. That's a side view. Okay, so in a cross-section survey, what you do, you usually, 
usually use them with some kind of alignment, what we call an alignment. And uh, with a cross-section survey, you go out and at some regular interval, let's say 100 feet or 200 feet or 1,000 feet or 500 feet, you go out and every time you get to that interval along the route, you stop and you survey a cross-section. So you come out here, if this was a levee, get a shot in the field, get a shot top of ditch, toe of ditch, top of ditch, okay, the toe of the levee, right here, the crown of the levee, crown of the levee, the two hinge points we call them, water side toe, okay, so I'm going to draw it on the profile, get a shot on the field, top of ditch, top of ditch, toe, hinge point on the crown, hinge point on the crown, edge of water, maybe you get a couple bottom of ditch shots too, or edge of water shots. Okay. And you repeat that at every cross section. So then you go your next 200 feet, you repeat those shots. You go your next 200 feet, you repeat those shots. That's how a cross section survey works. Okay, if it was a road, you might be grabbing a ground shot, hinge point on the shoulder, edge of pavement, center line, edge of pavement, hinge shot on the shoulder, toe, you know, toe or ground shot. Same principle. Okay. So that's what you do. You're taking a sample line or a cross section at some regular interval. Now, it doesn't have to be regular intervals. It could be at every beginning of curve and end of curve and, and every uh, before every bridge and after every bridge, something like that. But it's some regular interval. Regular interval or, or, or key feature. Okay, so that's a cross-section survey. Now, as I mentioned, cross-section surveys, you get gaps in your data. So let's, let's look at this example we have and I'll explain that. So you can see at cross-section, between cross-section 11 and 12, we have a ramp here. Okay, well, there's quite a bit of change here because of the ramp, right? So there's going to be a lot more, for example, going to be a lot more fill here, a lot more quantity of earth in, in this area because we've got the ramp built out here, okay? And your cross-section survey is not going to pick that up. You're going to miss that because it's not typical. It's not a typical section. Okay, now it may not matter depending on what you're doing. Okay, but it might matter a lot. So if you're doing a quantity survey, this is going to matter a lot. Now, you could say, well... We'll just run a section down the ramp. Okay, you can do that, but you're still missing <laughs> you're still missing a lot of data there, even if you run a section down the ramp. Okay, so given that, you might say, well, why, why would people even do cross-section surveys, given this flaw? Okay, one is because they're cheap, and two is because a lot of, not a lot, but there, there's software and calculation methods that are still built to take cross-sections as input. Okay, and what I would tell you is in that situation, what you should be doing is a break line survey that you use to generate your cross sections, because that's going to be more accurate. But a lot of engineers just don't understand that. They just their their software or their calculation method takes a set of cross sections, so that's what they want the surveyor to do. Okay, but if you're a good surveyor, you need to know the difference. Okay, so what's a how does a break line survey work? Okay, so in a break line survey, you don't go out and do sections, you actually come out here and you survey key points, like let's just say at all the begin curves and end curves, you come in and you're doing your survey, right? So all your BCs, ECs, your grade breaks, you're taking shots. Okay, what does that mean when you get to the ramp here? Well, when you get to the ramp, what that means is you're in here capturing all these details on the ramp, okay? So everywhere I've got a red circle, let's say you're taking a shot. So you can actually draw 3D break lines and planimetric line work of the ramp, right? So it's much more accurate survey. Okay, so in break line surveys, you're capturing angle points, begin of curves, ends of curves, highs, lows, key features, right? Grade breaks. Okay, so you get a lot more detail with that method. Now, what's the downside? It takes a lot more effort. It's a lot more work. There's a lot more shots here with a break line survey than there would be with a cross section survey. Okay. And you got to know something about how you would draw this stuff in CAD to do a good job in the field, right? And that takes time to learn that. So it takes, it takes more experience and more knowledge to, to run a good brake line survey than it does a cross-section survey. Okay, so those are the key differences between a brake line survey and a cross-section survey, right? Remember, brake line surveys are more accurate. You're going to get more accurate volumes, more accurate contours, you're going to get more accurate planimetric features out of a brake line survey. So as a general rule in my shop, 
we don't we don't do cross section topo surveys. We do break line topographic surveys, and if we need to, we can generate cross sections off of a surface model. Um, I, maybe I'll do another uh, whiteboard video. Maybe it'd be whiteboard video, or maybe on the computer show you how you can generate what looks like it was done a cross section survey from a good from a good break line survey, but. At least now you, you'll know the, dip, the, the basic differences between the two types of topographic surveys and you'll be able to answer some of those questions if you see them on an exam. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.